In this video, I'm going to go over creating the solutions to this array problem set starting from scratch. So the first one we have is print reverse. So before we start, I'm going to get my files set up correctly. I already have an HTML file. I just called it solution.html. I'm going to include a script tag, source equal to solution.js, and then I need to create that file. So let's save that, solution.js. And as always, I like to start with my console.log connected. Let's go open this up in the browser, open up the console, and we see our connected. All right, so let's start with print reverse. So print reverse is a function. So I'll start by defining the function print reverse, which takes a single argument and array. I'll just call it ARR. And all we need to do is loop through the array, except we want to loop backwards from the end of the array to the beginning, and then we'll just console.log each item. So a for each isn't going to be ideal here. We're going to use a for loop, which is a little more flexible in the order that we traverse the list. So for var i, and instead of starting it at zero, we're going to start it at the end of the array. So var i equals array.length minus one. And we have to add that minus one because the length is always one greater than the greatest index. So let's space this out a bit. Next, we're going to keep going while i is greater than equal to zero. And then lastly, we're going to i minus minus. So i will start at, in the case of print reverse of this array, um, three, six, two, five. I will start at this index, which would be three, and we'll print out console.log array of i. So that will print out five. And then we subtract one from i and print out array of i gives us two and then six and then three. And the last time through, i is equal to zero. So we print out three and then we're done. So let's take a look. I'm going to call this print reverse with this array, run it in the browser, and you can see we get five, two, six, and three, which is what we expected, five, two, six, and three. Let's move on to the next problem. So the next problem is is uniform, which takes an array as an argument again and returns true only if all the elements are exactly the same. So I'm gonna start by just writing a note that this is where is uniform starts, because this file will be pretty full by the end of this. So I just want to make it clear. So let's start by defining our function is uniform. And it's going to take a single array. So the way that I'm going to solve this, I'm going to make a variable equal to the very first item. So in this case, one. And then I'm going to loop through the array and compare that first item to every other item. And if at any point they're not the same, then we're going to return false and just end the entire function. But if we make it to the end, that means that every item is the same, so we can return true. So I'm gonna start by making my first variable, var first, is equal to the first item. Then I'm going to loop through the array. So I'm gonna use a for loop here. And there is a reason I'm not using a for each, which I'll explain after this. So I'm gonna start looping through i less than array.length i plus plus, and I'm just going to check if array i is not equal to first, that means that our array is not uniform, so I will return false. And then at the very end of my array, if we make it through the whole loop, I can return true. There is one small optimization here, which is I'm currently comparing the first item, array zero, to the first item, the very first time through the loop, if i starts at zero, I'm checking is array zero equal to first. So I don't wanna do that. I'm just gonna start it at index one. Let's test it out. Refresh our page. Is uniform of the array one, one, one. That's true. But how about one, one, two? That's false. And two, one, two, that's also false. Okay, so I mentioned that I didn't want to use a for each. 
And the reason behind that is that if I wrote a for each, I'll comment this out, and instead of a for loop here, if I did array dot for each function, and I call it element, and I'm going to check if element is not equal to first, I will return false. This is exactly the same logic, except we added in a for each instead of a for loop. We have a problem, and the problem is that when I return false here, this only returns out of the first function, which is right here. So it doesn't exit all of is uniform. It just exit out of the first function, which then brings us to this level, and then it just runs the next line, which is return true. So rather than have to deal with a, a workaround here, I'm just going to use a for loop because it's much simpler, but I want you to understand what the problem is. So to sum that up again, I return inside of one function, it only peels back one layer. So it only returns that exact function. And then the next function that it's inside of still finishes its execution. So I will comment this one out, and let's just leave this one as our real solution. Next up, we have sum array. So sum array takes a single array and it sums every item inside of it. So we're going to start with my comment sum array and I'm going to declare the function sum array takes a single array and in this case we need to make a variable to hold the total and then we need to loop through the entire array and add to that total. So I'll start with my variable total equals zero and then I'm going to do a for each so array dot for each and I could just do a regular for loop and I'm just going to call this element and I'm just going to add in to total every time so total plus equals element and then at the end return total and that's all I have to do so start total as zero loop through the array take every element and add it into total and then return total at the end let's test it out let's try doing sum array on the array one two three and I get six and how about ten 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 I get thirty okay so that's sum array the last one here is determining the max element in an array of numbers so I'm going to add my comments in first we're going to work on max here and I'm going to define that function first so function max takes a single array again and the logic here is that we're going to have a variable to keep track of the maximum and we'll just start it as the first element by default and then we're going to loop through every other item and compare that to the current maximum and if it ever is greater than the current maximum then that element is our new maximum and then we return that at the end so I'm going to start var max equals array 0 and then I'm going to loop through the array and just for variety's sake I'm going to use a for loop so for var i equals 0 and actually I can start it at 1 because we're already using array 0 for the same reason that I can start this one at 1 so start it at 1 var i equals 0 i less than array dot length i plus plus and all I want to do is check if array of i so if the individual element is greater than the max then max is now equal to array i so this will constantly change its value or potentially change its value if it encounters a new maximum so in this exercise here one two three at the very beginning one is the max and then we go through the loop and we compare it to two two is greater than one so two is the new maximum and then that repeats three is greater than two so three is the new maximum and the last line that we're missing is once the loop is done we just return max and we should be good to go so let's try this out refresh and let's try running max on one two three and we get three now let's try adding 20 in the middle and we get 20 
And lastly, let's play with a negative number and make sure that works. And we still get 20. Okay, so we have the four solutions here. All of them needed to use a loop. We used a for each in some of them. We used a for loop in some of them. In all of them, we practice arrays. Awesome, so next up, we're gonna learn about our next data structure in JavaScript, which is the object.